good morning good afternoon and good evening this is a sunrise daily paper review reaching you from Biafra land here on Biafra television so good morning from here and thank you very much for joining us this morning on this wonderful edition of uh, the paper review here on Biafra television like usual, we'll be looking into some issues that concerns us as people. We'll also be analyzing to find out what is the in-depth of the stories as to educate our people and to enlighten our people. It is our pleasure to welcome you this morning on this wonderful edition of the Sunrise Daily Paper Review. My name is Marzi Oge Friday Igri. And I'll be your anchor this morning. In the program this morning, I have Mada uh, Oinyechuku Nabuko on the program. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, nice to have you on the program. Thank you, Marzi. Thank you very much. So, our brother Marzi Elvis Ongodiwe will also be joining us on Skype today as usual to continue the analysis on the issues we have on ground here as to enlighten our people this program is designed for you and you alone to educate you on the things happening in Biafra land and also in the contraption called Nigeria we are here to expose the lies that is our business that is why Biafran Television is established in the first place to expose the lies peddled by our enemies, especially the Nigerian government. And it is our pleasure to have you joining us from all parts of the world where you are. Don't forget that the, the program we are also transmitting via Radio Biafra. So if you do not have a television set where you are, do not be uh, disturbed. Just go close, tune into the frequency you use to get Radio Biafra where you are to listen to the program on Radio Biafra London. We are also on YouTube, we are also on Periscope, every platform of the social media. We are on Facebook as well. We are transmitting uh, streaming live on our Facebook official page, Radio Biafra. So you can easily join us. You do not have any excuse to miss out to this wonderful program. So I urge you to stick to your radio set or any transmitting device as to follow us fully this morning because we have interesting topic which we will be looking into. And uh, you are the reason why we are here. If you are not, if you are not there, we won't be here. So we say thank you very much. For you to be there um, as usual we'll be looking into some issues like i said before and uh, our analysts both the one we have in the studio here Mada Oinyechuku Nabuko and um, our brother Mazi Elvis Awudiwe when he joins us on Skype we will also be doing justice to the issues we have here so we say thank you very much for joining us once again, I say thank you very much for joining me. On thank the you studio. for having me, Mazda Friday. Thank you very much. Don't forget, the program is also designed for you to participate. We have an audience participatory segment of the program. So when we open our phone lines, you can easily call in to make your own wonderful contributions via phone lines, via WhatsApp, via Skype, or any platform you choose. Just go get airtime credit so that you can be able to participate. We'll give you the phone number to participate or to call and then make your contributions when the time comes. But for now, let us look into the issues we have with, him, with us here. Yesterday, we played a clip to you on the uh, Fulani Hesman attack in Anambra State that left so many people dead and uh, so many people injured. So it's one of the topics we are going to look into this morning. And the, the report we have here says, Governor Willie Obiano of Anambra State, currently on a trip abroad, may before his 
um, return before his uh, scheduled date. Following weekend's attack by suspected Fulani herdsmen in some communities in Anambra West local government area of the state, in which six people were feared dead. Suspected herdsmen, some hamlet in an area known as Igwopi, Iobu, and Iinkolo camps in Anambra West and started firing guns on the houses while the occupants were still asleep, killing six people and wounding many others in the process. The area had become notorious for herdsmen attack, thus putting pressure on the Joint Security Task Force set up by the government to ensure peaceful coexistence between the herdsmen and the farmers. This is the food basket of Anambra State and we expect both the state and the federal government to do something about these frequent attacks. They must watch why the people are killed by the full herdsmen and their farms destroyed. This is a pathetic um, report. Like he says, this has been happening frequently. We have got so many reports of the Fulani Hesman attack on our people, particularly in Anambra State, in Enugu State. And last weekend, we all heard what happened when six people were killed as early as 5 a.m. in the morning while people were still asleep in their various homes in a farm settlement of uh, Anambra State. According to the reporter, he says that this place is the food ba basket of uh, Anambra State. And you could imagine what is, uh, is, is happening should they continue to uh, launch this attack. So would you say that uh, the, the, the leadership of IPOB, such as the governors and the the present including the representative members and the traditional rulers contribute to the unabated attacks and the killings of their fans by the Boko Haram and the Fulani Hesmen in those areas. Mm. Not the Friday. The truth is that I'm in pain. I'm in pain. You know, every day when you go into the internet you see death. And I keep asking, what have we done? What have we done? What have we done to these people? What have we done to Fulani Hetzman? What have we done to Nigerian government that they chose to look the other way when these people are killing us? Now, I'm not talking about the death enough, how they are killing our people. Now, they have encroached our land. They damage our farm. A farm where our, forefather, our fathers toil under the hot sun, the scorching hot sun, under the torrential rain. To be able to get food. Now these people leave their cows into the farm to feed on a human toy. You know, we talk about uh, Obiano being the governor of Anambra State and his um, failure in leadership. And you know, um, a governor is supposed to be a leader. Now, in my own understanding, a leader is someone that leads. A leader is someone that guides, someone that instructs, someone that counsels, someone that protects. Now, the same Governor Obiano is a man who cannot control his appetite, his addiction for alcohol. He is the one that was imposed or is imposed in Anambra State to control. If he cannot control his appetite, how can he control the Fulani headsmen from invading our land? But here's not my problem because it is not a known fact in the world that Nigerians are not interested in leaders. They are interested in looters. I don't call them Nigerian leaders anymore. I call them Nigerian looters. If you are not interested in killing the people, if you are not interested in subjugating the people, then you can never, ever be admitted into the corridors of power in Nigeria. So I have come into, um, uh, 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 I have come to, you know, understand that. But what I don't understand is how our people in our land decided to condone the killing. How our people have done nothing about it. How our people, I don't know what, whether if they are putting their hope in the government, the same government that is funding these people, or are they putting their hope in security? 
Look around you. The security are extorting our people, collecting money from that. I don't know. I don't know where they are putting their hope, but the truth is that it is about time. If we don't rise, if we don't rise to control this thing, nobody is going to save us. So, so do, you, you. do you think uh, that the governors are fully part of these uh, killings of our people? Yes. I am undoubtedly in belief that the governors, the presidents, they are the ones most. If they are not the ones most, why are they not? The, I mean, they are seeing the world has gone digital. Thank you. So, if you go to the internet, you are going to see this killing. It's everywhere. The video is everywhere. Now, if they pretend that they are not aware, I know most of these people have accounts. They have Twitter, they have Facebook, they have um, uh, 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 Instagram, they are, are connected to all the social, social media. And they are seeing this killing because if you go to internet, what you will see will break your heart. Beheaded head, children killed, women raped. So they are seeing it. So when you're seeing something and decide to do nothing about it, it means that you are in support of that thing. Or somehow, you want that thing to continue. The report also have it that uh, Obiano is likely to cancel his trip abroad uh, because of the killings. Do you see this as a step to do something tangible to protect the people from these uh, killings? Obiano, you know, I, I said something. I said, a man who cannot control his appetite for alcohol. A man, you've heard about um, how he gets drunk and a leader. A leader is someone that is worth emulating. A leader is someone that protects the people. Now, what are we going to emulate in the kind of lifestyle? Obiano, thanks to Obiano. Go to Waka. Hotels everywhere. They call him Olingo, Olingo Gohano. That is the only thing he go, is good at. Partying, clubbing and damaging our girls. The money that you're supposed to use to protect the people, to provide employment, you are using it to give girls sleep with them and probably damage them spiritually and physically and you tell me that i should put my hope in obiano anybody that is trusting that the governor will come to the to our aid i mean that person needs to, uh, a dose of reality okay now it has become very clear from your analysis and from what is happening that all these things they are doing is a pretense to you know paint the image that will look as if they are doing something to stop this crime and killings of our people because life and properties are involved here and more are still likely to happen should nothing you know be done about it so now that the government can no longer do anything the people who we thought they would come to our aid the governors the representative members and the rest of them so it has now come that it is the people that are going to do something about this to make sure that these killings are stopped so what do you think that the government, I mean, the people should do? Exactly what would you suggest the people to do? Because we can't keep quiet and our people are dying every day. So now that it has come to the knowledge of everybody that it is only the people who are going to do something about this, what would you advise our people to do at there this is, particular point is, in time? There is a saying that um, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. So, um, First and foremost, it is now the shame of the people that we have continued to allow this to happen. I mean, corruption have grown ways in Nigeria that, you know, you say something, you ask whether it's a pretense. They don't need to pretend about being corrupted anymore. Corruption have grown ways that it can be broadly, you know, perpetrated in Nigeria. So my advice to the people is to revolt. Protect yourself. Protect your family, protect your society. You know, do not, do not, do not tell yourself that I am not the victim. Oh well, I am not the victim of this. That it has nothing to do with me. We are all victims. Kill one, you kill all. Any Biafran, we are, we are responsible for every Biafran that have died in the hands of Nigeria because we have decided to do nothing about it until we start standing all things for IPOB. Without IPOB, I mean, by now they, they would have, you know, they would just come down to one village and burn it down. A few any headsmen would take control of a village. But thanks to IPOB, I mean, there are the people bold enough to come out. Yeah, you are scared of dying. They are the ones dying. They are the ones being killed. They are the ones being jailed. They are the ones being locked up in, in the dangerous Nigeria still. Why you sit in your home, comfortable, and, you know, complain. If you can't complain about Nigerian government, do something. Come out. In losses. Let's revolt against what is happening. 
this revolt, it, there needs to be a revolution, a, 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 a revolution in Nigeria. So that the people will know that these people, that the, the government will know that these people, that they are perpetrating all this type of crime on our humans. We are humans, we are not cattle. We are not cows. Thank you. Buhari went to the World Leader Summit to tell the world that uh, there is no place in Nigeria that you know, is currently being occupied by the terrorists, which includes Fulani Hesmen and um, the Boko Haram sets, who has been killing on a daily basis. Would you say that the president is being fair to Nigerians and also to the world at large? Well, Fashola said that there is 24 hours uh, electricity in Nigeria. Lai Mohammed said that rats infested the president's office. Uh, who is that one? What's his name? That said that uh, snakes swallowed. We are, we, are, we, are, we are used to all this lie. It's not something new. And you said Buhari? Oh God. We are... This country is a disgrace to humanity. This is a country that the president... I mean, what is wrong with the people? Is it that, I keep saying, is it that bravery died with the previous generation and cowardice is bred with this generation? I don't understand what is happening. This is a country where the president died over a year ago. And nobody, everybody is comfortable, or if not for Nazi, Inyam, the Kano, that have repeatedly said it. Nobody, even, do you know some Biafras believe that, uh, that Buhari is alive? They will defend it, they will tell you, oh, that man is Buhari. But I think whatever, whatever sacrifices these men have made, whatever blood they have shed to subvert the people, to, you know, control their conscience, oh, it's, it's effective. Because... You know, I read something. I read something online. Someone said that in the light of what is happening in Nigeria, if we were alive, we would have all been dead. It means that we are not alive in this country. We are dead. We are dead because <laughs> this is a country a dead man is ruling us and nobody is doing anything about it and we are telling me Buhari, Buhari what? Buhari is dead. So let's talk about the living. So it could even be that the man is ignorant of what is happening in Nigeria as uh, somebody who has imported He's a and, foreigner. Uh, He's so a foreigner. So he really don't know what is happening. No. Because uh, that, uh, it, that's a, a clear statement that, uh, or, I mean, is, is to show that the man in Asurok is not Buhari. Ah. Because if it is Buhari who is in Asurok, he would have known it very well that many places in Nigeria is not safe. That, that terrorism has taken over many places, especially in the north. And uh, look at the statement you know he just made now. Yeah. That is a clear indication that the man in Asherok is not Buhari, rather Jubre, as the Sudan from Sudan, who yes. do not really know what is happening in Nigeria mm. as a foreigner he is. Yes. So because he cannot say what he don't know. Mm. Because we will say uh, people of Ibo say you you Amaro, Ade Amaya. So uh, you've you know heard it all from um, our analyst here that you are the only person who is going to do something about these killings to make it to stop. You are the only person who is going to stop it. And what will you do to defend yourself and the self-defense you are talking about? At least you can get the requisite of uh, self-defense on your own without gun and bullets. You can train yourself such that anybody who comes to kill you can even disarm the person and kill the person first. There are so many ways to kill a rat to control to tell you this. Yes. We have come to the business of exposing the lies that is happening in Nigeria. And the politicians, which are our hardcore enemies, because they do not mean well for us. And it is our aim to debunk all their lies against us. And that is why we are telling you this, that the only thing you can do is to defend yourself before it becomes too late. Don't wait for them. They will not do anything for you. All they know is their pockets and their political ambition. So you should all be watchful. It has come to everywhere. Nowhere is safe. That is what Nambekano has been saying all this while on Radio Biafra. That it is high time we wake up and do the needful, which is to identify officially with IPOB, organize ourselves, and liberate our people from this looming doom. Uh, we will go into another issue we have here. 
and um, we'll also be analyzing from there. I hope our people are following. This is a uh, Sunrise Daily Paper Review on Biafran Television, and we are reaching you from Biafra Land this morning. And I have Nwada uh, Oyechuku Nabuko, who is doing the work of analyzing on the topics we have here as it comes from the news in Nigeria newspapers. They are junk. We are here to debunk it. We are here to expose the lies and to let our people know the truth as to go further. Um, still on last weekend, okay. the, uh, the, the, the Vice President of uh, Nigeria, Yemi Osibajo, says that uh, many world leaders are committed to ensuring that there will never be a repeat of the type of genocide that happened in Rwanda. Osiba just spokesman, Loalo Akande, in a statement on Monday in Abuja, said the vice president spoke with newsmen shortly after participating in the activities of the 25th commemoration of the Rwanda genocide held in Kigali on Sunday, 7th April 2019. Record that between April and June 1994, an estimated 800,000 Rwandans were killed. But between 1967 to 1970, over 3.5 million were yet were killed, but yet to be made known, given proper attention by anybody or group of people since that time till now what do you have to say about this uh, incident you knew yes. about your living nigeria to rwanda to talk about the genocide that took place there uh, about 25 years ago but here in biafra our people were killed in millions but nobody is talking about it well um May the soul of those that were killed in the Rwanda genocide continue to rest in peace. But um, thank you for thank you to Nigerian president. They continue to expose their shamelessness. So Osibanjo left here for Rwanda to participate in an exhibition of a genocide that killed 800,000 people. Thousand. Then in his own country, Biafrans are not part of Nigeria. Biafans are not. If Biafans were part of Nigeria, at least Nigeria, they, they know. The leaders know. Him of Sibanjo. In fact, I have to learn with Sibanjo. He calls himself a pastor. Someone that's supposed to have morals. Someone that's supposed to have conscience. I think this man, the blood, the blood they are sucking, the human flesh they are eating, it has stolen their conscience. It has stolen their... their everything in them what makes them human they are not human and we don't want to know that we don't have humans as leaders we don't have humans as leaders those men will continue to subjugate us they will continue to kill us 3.5 million were killed 3.5 million children women men were killed not cows not cattle not rats we killed in nigeria yet you cannot hear if you even make mention of it. They, they will arrest you now. They will, they will charge you of treasonable felony, uh, cessation. They will all kind of crime they can concord and you know come up with because the only good thing that Nigerian judiciary know how to do is how to concord crimes against Biafra. That is what they will do. So Osimanjo left here shamelessly boarded his private jet shamelessly and, and landed in Rwanda to participate shamelessly in a genocide that killed uh, 800,000 people by 3.5 million <clears throat> this, is, this should further prove to Biafran that any Biafran that is believing or clamoring or talking about uh, one Nigeria I mean there is something I think there is something there is something wrong with that person that person is sick he is not well any beer fan that will mention of one Nigeria that will just say, Oh, I am in Nigeria. Oh, let's pray for Nigeria. Like you will go to church and your brother will say, pray, pray for Nigeria, a country that Nigeria is not your country. It, it's time you come in terms with that, that Nigeria is not your country. And whatever budgets that they are making in Nigeria, trust me, 
their funds are not included. Thank you. The much. lives of her people who were killed during 1967 to 1970, during the genocide, you know, committed against our people by Gowon and the Nigerian-led uh, government, yeah. has been swept under the carpet. There is no doubt about it. If not IPOB, who came up to took it upon themselves to tell our stories? I think this matter has so far been died off, and nobody is talking about it. So why do you think that nobody is talking about us, the killings of our people in their millions, in 1967 to 1970? Uh, I don't understand. Uh, why, why do you talk about us? Is it people talk or us talking about us? I'm talking about people. You know, why do people not talk about it? You know, like they people are, that are outside the Yes, yes. <laughs> Both Nigerian government and the outsiders, the, communi the international communities, they're supposed to, because the lives of our people that were killed were not just in thousands, like we know. Millions of our people were killed. It's supposed to have been given proper attention, but up to now, no official date has been given by the international communities or by anybody in the world say, let us remember these people. They were killed in their dozens many years ago. Why do you think it continued to happen like that? Everything about Biafra is more or less swept under the carpet by the Nigerian government and the international communities. I don't think it's it like that. It is impossible for the same group of people that killed you to come out and start screaming injustice, 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 injustice. It's not possible. It's not done anywhere. So there is nobody will talk about it. Nobody can talk about you except you talk about you. I mean, the world waiting, the black ones waiting for the world to talk about that. Oh, they, should, they are waiting in vain. Nobody. Is it Britain that sponsored the genocide against black friends? Is it Nigerian government himself? Do you know that these people shamelessly, even even when they were during the war, when they were bringing um, food relief into Biafra land, they were attacked. Who would do? Food. To see that these people are cowards. They cannot even fight. They use hunger as a weapon of the war against Biafrans. They killed us in dozens, in millions. And you expect them. The same, perhaps that is what Biafrans are, are waiting for. They are waiting for, you know, Nigerian government to start talking about the genocide so that they can, oh, they, 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 they should keep on waiting. IPOB has gone into a lot of uh, activities, you know, of recent years to make sure that uh, our stories are being told, to make sure that people hear about us, what happened to our people. How do you read the effort of IPOB in telling the story of Biafra? I keep saying, thank God for IPOB. That is that if you are a Biafran, if you wake up in the morning, thank God, the first thing you should do is, God, I thank you for indigenous people, these people that call themselves freedom fighters. Thank God, if not for IPOB, if not for IPOB, IPOB has done everything and they are still doing everything to make sure that people, it's not about, it's not whether you are an indigenous, in fact, the struggle for freedom is not just for Biafra, for an average IPOB, an average IPOB understands that, that we want justice to return to the world. Believe me, injustice has become a norm in the world, everywhere in the government of the world. Injustice has become the norm. Now, we as an IPOB, what we are fighting for is for justice to return to the worldly system. So without IPOB, IPOB has done so much. And yet you will see a Biafran castigating, condemning, criticizing. They say, anyway, it's, it's, uh, that is black man for you. That is black man, you know. They are used to, you know, fighting against people that are fighting for them. So it's not something foreign or alien to me. But um, I must commend IPOB. I must commend IPOB. They have done everything and they are still doing more to make sure that... Um, Oh, people are free. Yeah, in, in the effort of IPOB to tell our stories, you know, they would be given a uh, hundred percent mark. Oh, they because they have done a lot in the using of media uh, and every other platform available. Yes. Yeah. But despite their efforts and doggedness in telling our stories, yes. it seems the world is still paying deaf ears to it. It seems the lives of our people who died were still doesn't mean anything to them 
they still see it as uh, childlike play, as something that doesn't really matter. So, what is your feeling, or what is your take on this ugly the world, reaction? The world, the world, for over two thousand years, Israel um, and the, the, the nation you have today as Israel were wandering in the world. They they don't have a home. Of course, they are not allowed into their home. If you come, they will kill you. In each country, they um, decide to you know take refuge in the, the governor, the president, the em uh, empire, um, the the uh, uh, emperor might wake up one day and decide, oh, I don't want these people, or I want them to kill. It continues like that. The world continues to wait. The Jews continue to wait for the world to come to their aid. Oh, they went to UN. They went to all the, the the bodies that were supposed to protect the human rights they went they filed petition they did a lot of things the world we see the world kept silent what did israel do they woke up one day and they decide that it is about time they take the bull by the horn it is about time they speak if you don't speak for yourself if you don't tell your story the world cannot tell your story so if you're waiting for the world to come to the age of IPOBs or Biafrans or oh, wait in vain because yeah the world has proven that they cannot you know um, they, 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 they will continue to turn especially when the issue concerns Biafrans or the Jew I don't know why the world have special hatred for these two people because Biafrans has been killed the world knows that we are do you know that according to the world law that after 50 years of um, uh, 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 what they call it a war like fighting for your freedom in a particular country and it is recorded that during those 50 years that there have not been war or you people raising up again that you are you should be granted you merit freedom we are long the world knows that the are long due for freedom and the world will not give us freedom because i keep saying Perhaps they are threatened by Biafran, but they don't have any reason to be threatened because we stand, except, you know, the, yeah, the world stands for injustice because Biafrans, we stand for justice. Yeah, uh, Osiba just stated clearly that uh, the world leaders are seriously committed in making sure that the repeat of what happened in Rwanda did not take place again in the world. But if you come to Nigeria today, more genocide is taking place. The report released by the United Nations says that uh, three months ago, uh, over 1,000 persons has been killed in Nigeria. And if you calculate it back to like five years, you find out that more than 5,000 has been killed, massacred in Nigeria. On daily basis, people are still being killed. Do you think that Nigeria is willing or ready? From all indication to cooperate with the world to ensure that a repeat of what happened in Rwanda did not occur again? No, I don't think Nigerian leaders want to. Okay, let's take for instance Nigerian coat of arm, the motto it says unity and uh, faith, peace and progress. I think that's Nigerian motto. Do yeah. you see justice there? Do you see truth there? It means that whatever it takes, however they can do it, with every weapon that they can discharge, their own agenda is to make sure that Nigeria remains one. So whatever that will threaten that oneness, they can never allow it. Rwanda government, the, the, world, the world is coming to the aid of Rwanda, or uh, talking about um, uh, what happened in Rwanda, not happening again, because yeah, Rwanda government, they are in support of it. They are in the world. You will first of all make a move. Then the world will come to your aid. Now, Nigerian government, they want what is happening. They are in support of what is happening to our people. They are like, like Nigeria. I read somewhere that Nigeria practices democracy, the government of the corrupt for the corrupt. Yes, by the corrupt. That is Nigerian government. So they cannot do anything for the people. They are useless for the people. So May 30th is fast approaching. Okay. Uh, it is uh, a day set aside by the indigenous people of Biafra to tell our story in a unique manner. And this year it is going to happen in the United States. Our leader, Mazen Ambekan, will be there live and direct, and many other IPOB members to yet tell our story to the world how our people were killed in their dozens many years ago. And 
their fans everywhere in the world are expected to do something. So what do you advise their fans to do as the May 30th is fast approaching to make sure that the world wants to hear our stories? Let me just say this in Igbo. This is the mentality of our people. May Chukwu Kikabe and deliver us. Please, I promise you, we are, we are we found ourselves. Now we are exhibiting something that Nigerian government should exhibit: the genocide against our people. Now, what do we expect from you? Support. We don't ask for anything. We ask, you know, the, the more the merrier. Support the efforts. Stop watching. Stop twatting the efforts of IPUB because they are the ones saving you. We are the ones saving you. Now we are telling the world our story. How your fathers were killed. How your, your own fathers, your mothers were massacred by Nigeria government. Your father and your mother. What is the story we want to tell the world on the 30th of May? If you are a Biafran and if there is life in you, if there is any life in you anymore, I am telling you, on that success of me, you must support this exhibition. Our, our people in the continent of uh, America are expected to attain that genocide exhibition in a large number. Uh, but many people will complain that uh, they don't have the money to attain and this and that. So, but it pays to make sure that something like this is done. There are things you must remove from the meat before you eat the meat. Yes. So, would you advise our people at all costs to make sure that they are there? Freedom. Because they say that, uh, giddy giddy, we oh. waste it. Yes. So if we turn out a mass, yes. the world will know how serious we are. Not when two or three persons are gathered there, but when we go out there in large number, the world will see that yes, we are really serious of what we are saying. So, is this a welcome bill? Because the IPOB leadership has been calling on uh, people to come, our brethren who are residing in America and other continents who could make it. Freedom requires um, self sacrifice. If you're pursuing something, at least I know about a goal, if you're pursuing a particular goal, you must you know be willing to sacrifice your comfort in the moment you must be willing to sacrifice a lot finance a lot so i am begging our people this is an opportunity the world will not tell our story the world cannot tell our story the world will do nothing for us we are the one that will tell our story we are the one that will say enough of this injustice so this statement may is another opportunity for us to tell our story to the world the truth the undiluted truth how it happened how they invaded our land they massacred us they just used, used weapon as they used hunger as a weapon of hunger that's it of me so i am begging all your friends all over the world as well as those in the united states wherever you are Please make sure you attend that exhibition so that they will see that their fans have awoken. This is uh, Sunrise Daily Paper Review on their fan television. This morning, the 9th of April 2019, we are reaching you live from Biafra land and we've been looking into some issues that affect us as a people. The ways to bring remedy to it. Because the lives of our people are very much important to us. Yes. That is why we are here. We are here to expose the lies of the Nigerian government and our enemies in general and tell ourselves the truth that they need to know. There is no any other place where you can get this apart from this platform. That is why we always urge you to stay with us. That is why we always urge you to join us wherever you are all over the world, especially those in Biafra land. And don't forget, this program, you can get it from many platforms. We are on Biafra Television. We are on Radio Biafra London. We are on YouTube. We are on Periscope. We are everywhere you can talk of. Our applications are there. If you have a smartphone, you can download it. You stream, you watch us. If you are on Facebook, you go to Radio Biafra London. Tell your friends and your families 
to come and join because we are spreading the gospel here such that no other place of the media can attempt to do. This is Radio Biafra and uh, it's a Biafran television and uh, it's a Sunrise Daily Paper Review. Uh, I have in the studio Nwada Oyechuku Nabuko and she has been doing the good work of educating our people on the topics we are discussing this morning. The program is designed for you, so you have the right to participate. When the time comes, we will give you the phone numbers to call in to make your contributions. Uh, but for now, we will go on a short break and when we return, we will continue. Thank you very much for joining us. Hello, dear friends and uh, lovers of freedom. It's a wonderful good morning from here in Biafra land. The program still remains uh, Sunrise Daily Paper Review here on Biafra television. We are also transmitting via Radio Biafra London. We are also streaming live on Facebook at Radio Biafra London. We are on Periscope, we are on YouTube. You can easily get us anywhere in the platforms of the social media to be part of this wonderful and enlightening program designed to expose the lies as peddled by our enemies, the Nigerian government and those that we have here in Biafra land who have made up their mind to work with our oppressors. It is our business and our main assignment and our goal to expose their lies as to tell ourselves and our people the truth and free ourselves from their evil uh, plans. This morning we've been looked in, into uh, different issues that are concerned us as people and we are very much sure that you've been following up if you are just joining us we've been discussing for a very long time now and uh, i remain your anchor on the program for today mazi oge friday igiri and i have wada oyechuku nabuko has been doing the work of uh, uh, analyzing educating our people, exposing the lies and telling our people the truth on what they need to know on the things happening in Biafra land as it is on these uh, issues we are looking into today. Don't forget that we will open our phone lines in the no distant time and we expect you to call in to make your contributions. We expect you to make your, uh, your comments such that will benefit us and also encourage our people towards what we are doing. So wherever you are joining us from, from around the globe, we welcome you once again and we say Mechukwa Biyama bless you as you are joining us. You are welcome back. Thank you. Mazi Friday. Thank you very much. So we still have uh, other issues that uh, we are going to 
be looking into before we open our phone lines. Uh, before now, the issue of uh, CJN uh, regarding the former uh, CJN, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Walter Onoge, has been trending how the Nigerian government conspired the cabals, in quote, conspired to remove him from the office illegally by accusing him of uh, money laundering and inability to declare his assets before he became the CJN, all geared towards one aim, which is to remove him from the office and install their own mandate, or perhaps to install their own man. And they have succeeded in doing that. The case has been in the court because there are some group of lawyers that took it upon themselves to challenge it in the court, to challenge the federal government of Nigeria in the court, because the remover of uh, water on Norge, according to them, is illegal. And everybody that see what happening in Nigeria today, as long as the constitution is concerned, we know it that the remover of water on Norge, the former CJN, who is a Biafran, is illegal but the highest drama of it took place uh, last weekend and um, on Monday last yesterday uh, 25 lawyers uh, who were devoted their time to speak for Onoge approached the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja asking it to terminate further hearing on suit challenging what they termed as illegal suspension of former Chief Justice of Nigeria, CJN Justice Walter Onohe by President Muhammad Buhari. Justice uh, Onohe, the plaintiff led by human rights activist Mr. John Mary Jidobi said that they decided to discontinue the suit after they got information that Justice Onohe has succumbed to pressure and voluntarily tendered a resignation letter to the first defendant, President Buhari. They told the court that pursuing the legal action to its logical conclusion would amount to crying more than the bereaved. Notwithstanding the facts that the matter was earlier fixed to be heard on May 23rd. Uh, look at the drama that has been playing us regard this issue. Do you see that or do you think that the federal government has finally achieved their aim of totally removing or not from the judiciary? Well, um, hmm. Anoya tendered his resignation, according to what you said. You know, the only good thing that, uh, and they know how to do it well, they've done it, with, they've proven it with uh, justice, injustice, Bint and Nyako. The only good thing they know how to do is how to, the Nigerian government, to blackmail you into succumbing, succumbing to what they want. And probably that is what they must have done to uh, Walter Onohe. Now let's look at the constitution. The constitution says that um, for the president, if for any reason that the office of the chief justice of the nation is vacant, for any reason, it doesn't say that maybe probably the, the president wakes up one day and decides that, oh, I don't want the chief justice of the nation anymore, I want to remove him. If for any reason, let's say the reason of death or fatal accident or sickness, that the office of the chief justice of the nation is vacant then the president can appoint someone and that appointment is just for three months so it's when it comes to nigeria does not keep their own constitution nigeria is not nigeria is not a lawful country the, when you talk about nigeria and law hey you go to um let's the word justice means fair just uh, impartiality, fairness, but when you come to Nigerian courts, 
that is where they practice injustice to the highest level. That if the person, let me remind the, the, the people that the particular justice that they are talking about is a Sharia law justice. So, a Sharia law. Thank you. He does not have. The, I'm sure he does not even have uh, o, o level. That you know that is the normal emblem in Nigeria. They don't need O level anymore. They need people that. And when Buhari removed this man, Jubri, I'm sorry, Buhari is late. When Jubri removed this man, it was few months or few weeks to the election. Now, the people never revolted. The opposing party never revolted. Even, even if you are dumb. Even if you're stupid, you should know that this move by the president is a checkmate. That is to prove that even if he read the election, which he did, and you decided to, you know, um, take him to the court, he will have his own representative, a man he handpicked to be there to represent him. Now, you will expect the PDP to totally withdraw from the election when that or every other party to say oh we don't want this anymore since the it since it becomes he is now an anarchist that we don't want this anymore but no they went out nobody revolted nobody said anything about the chief judge the president the president of the country what gives them the right to remove a man that is supposed to ensure that justice and equity and fairness is in a nation you removed him with your hand and now you have blackmailed the then sitting chief justice into tending that is nigeria we are a lawful country no one need to tell um, a common nigerian or a black man that uh, the executive is under the control of uh, or is perhaps controlling the judiciary yes and this case of uh, water or Norway, and what is happening in the Nigerian judiciary has proven that the judiciary is under the influence and the control of the executives. Mm -hmm. Talking about uh, the president and the few cabals who claim the ownership of uh, the contraption called Nigeria. So, from your own perspective, would you say that yes, the judiciary is under the influence and the control of the executives? And why should it be so? Well, you know, <laughs> I let me let me just. I saw someone doing something that it's not right, and you know, when I confronted him to to you know uh, to advise him on against what is in, do you know what he replied? No. That everything is upside down in Nigeria. That we are living an upside. That is to say that the judiciary, as we, as we have it in other parts of the world, is not so in Nigeria. There is no thing. What are they? Is it not the same uh, judiciary that stood by and uh, um, uh, the, 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 the military sent men to uh, the, the uh, uh, what's the name? Bratai sent men to uh, the house of an innocent man and killed 20. The same judiciary. They are there and people are dying. Please, there's no judiciary in Nigeria. Well, Water Onoge is no longer a kid as long as law and order or perhaps judiciary is concerned in Nigeria. He is in the right position to take decisions of what happens in the judiciary during his reign. Yes. And there are many people who came to stand for him. These 25 lawyers, as we see here, headed by human rights uh, activists. Is that there is no body, I mean there is no single person in the corridors of power in Nigeria, be it executive, be it judiciary, or injustice. You reminded your own in the past. And then what do you do? You just close your mouth quietly and go to go to the backyard and hide. Say for instance, the man has in the canoe. They don't have anything. If had it been they had something against him, oh, by now, the man will say, oh, please, let me. But because they don't have anything, when you are spotless, when you stand for the truth, when you are a justice, not an injustice, and when you see injustice being perpetrated on the people, you will do everything 
you will employ every arsenal within your reach to make sure that you return justice to the system. But when you have a cockroach, rats, skeleton inside your cupboard, you cannot do that. You cannot stand. It's a, it's a clear indication, very, very well known that Walter Onoge may have had a skeleton in his keyboard. That was why he was quick to succumb to the threats and the influence of the executives. There is no doubt about it because a man of influence like him should have stood His boldly yeah. on, you know, to defend himself and uh, the world will hear him out. But who knows? Nigeria is a business center. Anybody come, you take your own share. They have one or two things against him. That's why he may have done this. Yeah. But in a time like this, when it seems that uh, the judiciary, which is supposed to be the hope of the common man, has been messed up with, if you go to the court, you will not get justice again. Because the people who will deliver the justice, they have all been bought by the executives. Those who will stand to make sure that uh, justice is maintained are no longer interested in doing that. What do you think should be the hope of the common man? Judiciary in Nigeria. Nigeria, which judiciary again? Is it the same the judiciary that stood at, do you know how many, how many thousands of Biafras that are wallowing in, in the court, in the, in the cell, in DSS dungeon, in Abuja, in SSS? Okay, let, let me remind, let me also remind the people in case you've forgotten that Nigeria is the highest uh, human organ trafficking country. Now, how do they got this organ? From, from uh, uh, the people that call themselves uh, uh, the SSS. They go into the streets. They take up. No, judiciary is there. The people that is ensure to ensure that there is justice and fairness and impartiality in the, all of them has been compromised. Like I said, if you don't have a skeleton in your cupboard, you will not be admitted into the corridors of power in Nigeria. So that when they want you to thwart justice, hey, if you refuse. You'll be blackmailed into doing that. Exactly what they're doing to Bin Tanyako, that he's talking at the both sides of his mouth. He doesn't know what he's He can do nothing for the people. I... <sighs> See, the only hope of Biafrans, it's this, this thing I'm about to say cannot be overemphasized. The only hope of Biafrans is joining, please. No matter what you're doing, just run no, for your life, for the life of your children. For the life of your unborn generation, run into any IPOB. That is your only hope. Now, I'm talking about the indigenous people of every, um, the, the other tribes of Nigeria, the Arewas and the Ojudiwas. Those people, you know, let me, let me, let me take the Arewas, for instance. They believe that they are... You are here shouting Jagaband. You are shouting Tinibu. You are shouting uh, Sibanja is the vice president. What have you benefited as a common man? You are supporting them. You that is a Biafran shouting Willie is willingly walking. Do you, the, do you see the level of your stupidity? Willie is willing, how have you benefited, benefited from the government of these people? From the governorship of these people? Go to the roads and see how our roads are. A country that has, this country has money. Go to the road. Is it electricity? There's no, nobody is talking about electricity. The noise pollution is too much. The generator will constitute the noise pollution. The siren by the, the, the people need us. We still consider everything in Nigeria is in shambles. This country has rotting and decayed. And you are still putting your hope and your trust on the on the on, on the, the same government that has subject and on the international community. No. The indigenous people, it is about time they come out and defend their right, their dignity, their integrity, their right, their fundamental right to life as written in the stupid Nigeria constitution. Thank you. If you are just joining us, the program is a Sunrise Daily Paper Review on Biafra Television. We are also transmitting via Radio Biafra London and we are streaming. As to make your own contributions. And you can call us on WhatsApp with plus two three four nine zero five six 
0242-680-8583. That's our WhatsApp number. You can also call us on a direct phone line with plus 234-7020-35-3706. You also call us on uh, Skype and Facebook at uh, Sunrise BTV. And before we open our phone lines up, before you call in to make your contributions, we'll go on a short musical break. And when we come back, we'll be taking your calls. Don't go away. Still remain Mazi Oge Friday, your dear uncle. And then with me is Mada Onyechuku Nabuko. We'll be right back. Organizations and they will keep quiet all the 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 the, the uh, journalists in that very place of people that surround the very gatherings we keep quiet without asking them you come to the or you have been speaking about something that is happening in Rwanda what about the things that is happening in your own country but they, they won't say such a thing like that and at the end people will continue to die just like what uh, we are not is doing right now and um, nobody is speaking all we are clamoring say hey they've killed us again or oh, five people died in uh, Anam six people died in Enugu and uh, then died in Abba. Every place they will keep hearing the same news. And what are the reactions? They, you know, the, uh, the, the governors are not there to help you. And what they are interested is to travel from one uh, diaspora to another. You know, uh, and those of the traveling is not, not they, they, they will use a good motive. But right inside them, they have a terror motive because they go there to do business. They go there to sell their. Uh, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are criminal ideas they go there to bank in the money they stole from us thank you do you think that these uh, governors are likely to do something about this now to stop the killings my brother the report you says that uh, the, will, the governor of uh, Anambra state will be you know, on the killings of our people on weekend at Anambra state will stop his international trip. Do you think that from this step, they are likely going to do something to stop these killings of our people this time by the headsman? My, my brother, my brother, let me just tell you, the, the, these people are very smart. The world, they use their stopping the international trip will now trigger the, the a kind of a horrible mind and people that don't understand the game and tricks they are playing. Hey, will you be not just, uh, he just stop the trip with overseas to, to do what? What does stopping your trip to overseas uh, has to do with the problem that is on ground? Is it not your duty to stop it? Why must you make name? I mean, why must you trend that you want to stop your trip? Which means the killings in that very land does not make meaning to you. It doesn't make sense to you. So uh, if you tell other people now that you want to stop your trip to overseas, to look into the issue, what, has, what have you been doing? You've been on ground, you've been on office, you've been, if you have done this Anam, it's not far, it's just a stone throw Anam from a, a glory to Anam. So you've been in office since you've not done anything, and uh, now what the news is trying to trend, uh, we know we are not has to stop is uh, that is bunkum that is stupidity it's nonsensical nonsense i don't believe in such gullible stupidity well, like just like what i said the other day is it yesterday or stuff like that um yesterday these are the people he has sent some men with money and the igwe of um Anam, this man called uh, sylvester nose sylvester nose that lives in asaba and rule people in Anam. He called the man, they called uh, this uh, uh, house of uh, this Fulani. They begged them, they kneel down. I have the video. They kneel down. They are now people with the other cabinets. They kneel down begging the Fulanis. And these were the people that the, uh, the Sylvester Nose, the Igwe of Anam, brought into the land. 
then why do you have to beg them? Then now they now they they, they, they now use governor that he wants to he will stop his trip to that my brother. These people are demons. They they, they are very smart. But I believe that our people in the right now are coming up with great senses to, to, to debunk all these all the lies. You know, so how many people do, does he, he kind of expect to die before he could do up, do something? He's ever the chief security of the state. My my brother, forget about these people. Thank you. Thank you very much. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We'll, we'll get back to you shortly. Um, in case you are just joining okay. us, this is a Sunrise Daily paper review on Biafran Television. And now our phone lines are open. You can call in to make your contributions. You can call us on WhatsApp on plus two three four nine zero five six six zero eight five eight three call us on a phone line plus two three four seven zero three five three seven zero seven I take it again plus two three four seven zero two zero three five three seven zero six you also call us on Skype and Facebook at Sunrise BTV. The platform is yours. Calling to make your contributions, ask your questions, and we'll react to it. Our analysts are here with me in the studio, Wada Oenyechu Nabuko, and our brother Mazi Elvis, who just joined us right now, uh, is also here to make sure that you are being cleared of whatever confusion that you may be having. Uh, Mazi Elvis. As we wait yes. to receive calls from our people, um, our people were killed, their fans were killed in their millions in 1967 to 1970. Nobody talked about it. Nobody is talking about it. Apart from the indigenous people of Biafra, led by Mazi Namdekano and they are also talking about the Rwanda genocide, which 800 persons were killed. Okay, Mas Elvis, I'll get back to you. We have a caller on WhatsApp. Caller, good morning and welcome to the program. Hello. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the program. Hello. Hello, good morning. We can Hello. hear you. My name is Abish. I'm calling from Lagos. You're welcome to the program. Hello, my Go name on. is Abish from Lagos. Go ahead, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, I, I want to speak in the eventually, eventually, we now are magazine and you can now see a new window model. Oh, good, 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 During the 1967 to 1970s. Yes, um, my courage. You've just said it all. Um, number one is our people are afraid because um, I will just uh, paraphrase a bit. Um, if you're listening to. Hello, Master Elvis, please hold on. We have yes. a caller on WhatsApp. Caller, good morning and welcome to the program. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, my brother. My name is uh, 
My name is uh, Chimbo I'm coming from... Uh, um... Go ahead, we can hear you. Yeah, actually, I just uh, I just uh, log in now. Well, I don't really know the topic. Uh, we are talking about the Fulani Hesman killings. Last weekend, our people were killed in Anambra State. Hmm. And uh, there are so many other issues. We 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 all right, we, we all know that uh, it is no longer a story. Uh, I think the Zoo country have made it uh, their custom and tradition. You know, killing people, using Fulani Hesman to kill people. To kill their friends, not to eat people, because a full animal cannot kill his full animal. You understand? So, full animal can only kill the evils because they know their agenda. So, talking about it, and every day the killings continue. But the major problem is that my people, my people, don't seem to understand that these people they are not your brother. They are not your brother. They only, their plan, they have, their mindset is how to kill you. You understand? But when you come out and talk about it, uh, you want to say, uh, you want to come out and talk about it, you will still find out, you see still, still some idiots that all want to come and say, uh, 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 those that they are giving one, one error to two naira. The only thing, they, when they come out and say, uh, they will give them 100 naira, 5 naira, they will, they, they will not say anything. Well, my advice to everybody is everybody has to be very, very careful. Because them now, they are not your brother. Uh, so they can do you anything at any time. And another thing is, let them... Caller, good morning and welcome to the program. Mazi, I'm not here. Yes, go ahead, we can hear you loud and clear. Okay, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, my fellow Biafran, wherever you are listening from this uh, morning. My name is Pastor Jack and I'm calling from Lagos. I am from Umonumoni, so we see autonomous community and we see Sinohaji. Haji is in Umo province. I thank Chukwe Gitabama this morning for you people. I thank God for the instrumentality of indigenous people of Biafra, which he has chosen to me to restore Biafra. I also want to thank the leadership of IPOB, from our leader, Amazon, and the Taro deputy, and every other person working tirelessly and assiduously in making sure that this, our dream of restoring Biafra, is become a reality. Yes, just like we are discussing this morning, the truth is, uh, it, it, it is an eyesore and unheard of that uh, the world are condemning Rwanda ge uh, 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 genocide of thousands of people who lost their life. Whereas in Biafra land, we lost about nine to ten millions of people, and nobody is talking about it. Everybody swept it under the carpet. And not only do we lost millions of people, we have continued to lose millions of people. In the this conspiracy, this conspiracy is just as as that of Israel. You remember Nazi, the Nazi incident. You remember every other thing our sister, the Israelites, are passing through China. The persecution still continue. But there's one thing I want to tell us. I think uh, as at uh, this time around through IPOB, we have done everything necessary needed in order for us to be set free. After the war. After the Nigeria Biafra War, it is expected that after 30 something years we should be free. But this is 40 something years counting, and nothing has been done about it. And we are still being massacred. The progress still continues. And we have done everything necessary to demonstrate peace in order for us to be free. But the world is looking the other way around. I think it is high time we take our destiny in our hand. What do I mean? We are not going to wait for the world. Or the international community do not like because they are the initiator of uh, 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 the initiator of what is happening in our land today. The conspiracy is because of what the blessing God has 
bestowed upon his children. Not only that, you can see previously what is happening that uh, the yeah, um, all those ones just want to rationalize but essentially is the little thing God has given us in order to bless us. But what am I saying? Everybody, all hands must be on the deck to make sure that we get Biafra. It is either now or nothing. We are ready to go out there to defend our land and defend our generations to come in making sure that we get Biafra. It doesn't matter how many we are going to lose. That is just a simple truth. Because it's a lie. They never see that. They continue fighting until they restore their land. And that shall be in the case of Biafra. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Oh, hold on, on that. On that. Yes, yeah. Um... All has must be on deck, like uh, our last caller said. And that is the needful. It must be done. Caller on WhatsApp. Good morning and welcome to the program. Hello, good morning. Good morning from here. Yeah, my name is Simon Bishop. Yeah, I want to thank you first of all for the good job you probably be doing. May you go care and bless you all. I bless you too. And bless all your few in the media that also spread the good news for us to hear. It's good to have them and bless you people and bless our great leader, Martin and the Kalo, our deputy, which is my former, as which is my former. It's good to have them and bless you all and bless all the old people of Biafra. Um, what I want to say is just yeah. simple and short. I called yesterday and what I said yesterday is what I'm going to repeat today because I'm not happy. If our Safalani can have cut last and have gone to guide his own house, we Biafra, we must have our own cutlass and have our own gun to guard our own good, our own woman, our own sisters, our own brothers, to make sure that we guide ourselves. We will not expect us to fly to guide their own cars and make it for them between our people. And we are waiting that the government will come and do for us, which you know that the government, them, they are all eating their bribe in one way or the other to commit their self. They cannot be able to speak against their people because when they speak against their people or speak for their people, they reject them. They are afraid. So we must stand our right to have our own gun to kill them back, to protect our people back. We must not wait. The king or whatever they call him, the Igwe, we are going to burn their house. Their, their, their life is not in the air. We are going to chase them away because they have committed themselves. You will not commit yourself to come and guide us. We need to protect our own our people, our family, our cows, our own goods, our own flowers, which are AK-47 too. Because it's clean, clean and clear that since they can protect their own cows, with like that and clean our people, we need to protect our own too and be killing them back. May God bless you all. And bless my you contribution. too. Contribution. Thank you very much, my brother. Uh, Mazi Elvis, are you there? Yes. And you were yes, saying something before brother. our first caller. And uh, yes. I also um, want you to react to the issue our people are emphasizing on. That all hands must be on deck. Yes. Self-defense also very much important. But on this note, what kind of uh, self-defense would you advise our people to go for? Knowing it fully well that IPOB um, has not gone into armed struggle. So there are so many ways to kill a rat. So what would you urge our people to do at this particular point in time to resist these killings? Yes, uh, my brother, uh, what I want to say, like uh, the last caller just said, I, uh, they said in Igbo language, that is, if you don't do like a madman, people will not give you your right. Like this very Igwe that I mentioned, his name Sylvester Nose from Anam, and he lives in the Asaba. Uh, we know where he is living in Asaba. We know where his house is. We know where his residence is. And these people, they don't live in the moon. They live on earth here, and they move around, and people are being killed. But um, before the, the spectators or people that will separate the fight will emerge, fight has to be staged from the, the, the duration where the scene, the, the problem emerged. So let the people from that very Anam, because I saw them on the, on the, on the street the that time, their women came out on a, they, 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 on, on, on a rally talking to the government that, 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 that is not listening to them. This is, this is nonsense. You know your enemy. Government house is not where you're supposed to lay your complaint. 
We have a caller on WhatsApp. Caller, good morning. And welcome to the program. Morning. I'm calling from London, India. I'm a Jaffa. Hear me? Yes, go ahead. Can you hear me? Go ahead. We can hear you loud and clear from here. Don't listen to your device. I'm calling. I'm calling from the land of India. I'm a Jaffa. Good to know you are a Jaffa. Yeah, land of India. From Anambra. You can proceed. We can hear you. Call us back, please. Mas Elvis, please, uh, you may proceed. Yes, um, my colleague, just like what I was saying before the caller. These people, we know them, and they said everything that our leader will come up on earth. We right? start uh, kind of uh, uh, telling you because you you know the time to sleep and you know the time to wake up, you know the time to eat. So if somebody has vowed to take away your life, you don't wait for our leader to command you because uh, IPOB has not meant to carry arms and we are peaceful. But um, being peaceful, people should not take it as a cowardice, even to the masses, to the indigenous people. So those of them that owns the land has to do, they know the house of the Igwe, they know even uh, we have the phone number of the man. When you call him, he, he used to lie. He tell you that he is not, but he is the one. They know the the, the, the the house. Let me just tell you, these people that we are mentioning right now are the people that have been fighting with Aguilera, Muleri, and Nambu, um, uh, um, uh, uh, and what they call Ebapu, if you talk Gwari, and stuff like that. They are the people that they know to fight. They fight themselves. Now the need has arises. Why are they living like a people that don't have hope? Let them use those of their diabolic things if they know how to use. Let them bring it up right now and just this fully away. They, it's, it's not to use your diabolic power against your brother or using it against. Now the, the need of that your diabolic power has arises. Or that use it now if you don't have gone. Use whatever thing as a man because in that very place. If you tell a man that very play in, in your name or to your glory and you open your mouth and tell them, oh God, what if you that you can do nothing? I'm telling you that very one will provoke that man to 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 to, to use the very powers on you. Now yeah, Pastor Elvis, please, please we we'll get back to you. you. Call her on phone. Good morning and welcome to the program. Well, good morning. Go ahead, you can hear me. Yeah, my name is Elvis. Yeah, my name is Elvis. I'm calling from Mozambique. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, can you hear me? Go ahead, you can hear yeah. loud and clear. I appreciate you because you do not think you are the deal for us. We are not here in the country. We are not happy here of what is happening. This is the right time we have to defend ourselves. I'm sure this is every time I saw the killing, the killing, the killing, the killing, the killing. The killing. Yeah, the killing is very, very too much. We are tired of this killing. We are tired of this killing. We have to organize people to do for us. Hello? Hello? Go ahead, we can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, what I'm saying, the killing is too much. I'm always sharing tears whenever I see the killing. Thank you very much. Uh, Mazi Elvis. Yes. You heard from our um, last caller. He's not happy of what's happening in Biafra land. Nobody is happy. Um, either. If there's anybody who should be happy, even Devil is not even happy with what is happening in Nigeria. So, yeah, you quickly finish what you Friday. say. Yes, Mazi of the Friday. Nobody is happy. But is the main thing. Who is going to lead the squad? Who is going to speak? Who is going to command? Who is going to carry out the assignment that our leader has just given, put on the table? 
is not to come and show your grievances. That is number one. Killing is too, so much. Then what are we going to do? That is the question. What are we going to do? Like this very Igbo now, we know his house. We know him. He's not living in, even if you want me now, I will mention his address. I will call his way. I will call his phone number. You track him. When you enter motor for monitor, this way you will drop. This is how to get to, to his place. People from on ground, people on, like us now, will start going to every place to ask him. You understand what is happening? Not to vibrate. Vibration is very good. But what is the, they say, prayer without work is good as good as dead. You understand me? So I accept it is time you now for people artists. to know the okay. right thing. Um, we have a caller on WhatsApp. Caller, good morning and welcome to the program. Yeah. Um, okay. My uh, yoga fire there. Good morning and uh, easy. Good morning to um, you. Uh, well Thank you. I greet everybody Welcome. and I greet all the friends. Uh, my name is Mazi Ujikram Palam from New Delhi in India. One thing our people have to do is, first of all, once our people, we are living at home, not in the bush. So once we see these people in the bush, we have to chase them away. Immediately we see them in the bush, not giving them chance. In our own area, we made bush for a man. We made bush for farming. We didn't make bush for living. Once they come to your bush, make sure you organize your youth, not um, Igwe or Eze or governor. Or I can not do anything because they are living in safety place. They are even moving by security. They are even having their own guns also. So the people at the village, once you see them, ask them, let them go and rent their house. Stay in the bush to land the man we are going to stay in the bush. Once you see them in your place, make sure you take them away immediately. If you are giving them chance, within two, three, four days, Nigeria, Boko Haram, Nigeria Army, they will bring a gun to them to kill our people. So our people must be going to the farm. If you are going to the farm, you cannot kill a, a Fulani man with a knife because Fulani has been killing with knives. There is one thing uh, I may advise, but it's not uh, necessary to say it on, on air. How to keep people is very, very easy. But we cannot be doing it on air. Our people have to be, be vigilant. Once you see anything on, on your village with their cow, arrange you. Don't say, let you uh, or as they give you command. Or let them know. If you are dying, nobody will say. Those now who die, they only have come and go. Nobody will ask of them. Dwelling will not ask of them. Police will not ask of them. Governor will not ask of them. They have, they have gone forever. So better you protect yourself. Better if you have somebody to kill you and leave, then you die. Better you kill that person and run. It's all I want to say, my, my, my brother. Thank you. You've thank part you, part thank you very much for, for a wonderful part. contribution. Thank you. Thank you. We keep over emphasizing on this because uh, the lives of our people are involved here. And I say that action is louder than voice. Mwada um, Oyechi. Our last caller talked about prevention. That is chasing them out before they will even think of doing anything unbearable or unhearable. But if you go to some of our communities where these Fulani men are occupying, it is the traditional rulers and some of the people who are in the government that give them the authority to stay there. Some of them collect money from them to give them portion of land to stay. And when the people who are involved, the ordinary people, the indigents, go to drive them away, they will insist that it is the Igwe's that ask them to stay there. So on this condition, what would you make of it? Well, um, I am still insisting that it is time our people overwhelm these people. I go into the streets and I see Fulani headsmen walking in all their magnificence and boldness and other city with their knife and cutlasses. Then you still see our people there not doing anything and well these are the same people that have been killing and beheading our people. So it is about time. It's not 
I don't care. We, we shouldn't care how much the, the government collect from them or how much the, the, the traditional ruler collect from them because they are not the ones dying. The governors are not the ones dying. The traditional rulers are not the ones dying. Their children are not the ones dying. It is our children, our mothers, our fathers are the ones dying. So it is our duty to protect them. It is our duty to defend ourselves. It is time we overwhelm them wherever you see them. In fact, we should, it's about time we ban the activities of Fulani headsmen. Be them peaceful, be them harmful. It's about time we ban them from working freely in our land. They should go back to their land because our land is not a grazing field. Yes, uh, it's well understood. There is no need harboring these killers. They don't mean well for you. And uh, if you are just joining us, we are almost coming to the end of the program and it is Sunrise Daily Paper Review on Biafran Television. Today, the 9th of uh, April 2019, we are reaching you live from Biafra land and we are reaching you on Biafran Television. We are also transmitting via radio Biafra London. We are streaming live on Facebook at Radio Biafra and uh, we are on YouTube, we are on Periscope so you can easily get us anywhere you want to get us and it is an audience participatory segment so you can call in to make your contributions. Let's see how many calls you can take before we uh, round off the program for this morning. You can call us on WhatsApp plus 234 nine zero five six six zero eight five eight three you can also call us on phone line plus two three four okay um seven zero two zero three five three seven zero six we have a caller good morning uh, good morning good morning my people uh, and the uh, and uh, good morning. Good morning. Okay. Um, thank you guys very much for your beautiful work. Um, I want I want to go to on this killing. You know, uh, the ego, the ego doesn't own the land. If the indigenous people of the land own the land, so we don't care we go or the the government the, the governor who went and collect more from from the the flag we men. We don't care. Let them go back and, and take their money back from the evil. Let them go out from our land. It's a, it's, it's the right time for we to we can't just wait for them to be killing us. They, they now they they have started killing. Before you know you do enter twenty, one hundred, two hundred. You see? We should we are the evils, yeah. As Negroes, we don't, we don't, we are not afraid of war. Now, we know in our, in our best set, we should protect ourselves, you know. It's time for me to protect ourselves and stop, uh, 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 you know, it is, it is already time to, for us to protect ourselves, you know. That is my own contribution. Thank you very much. Of course, we must protect ourselves by all means possible, because we cannot allow this to continue to happen. The only thing we do is to do the needful. And uh, as our analyst has been doing, you know what you are supposed to do. Quickly identify with IPOB nearest to you. They have the key to the problem we are having here. Call her on WhatsApp. Good morning and welcome to the program. Yes, Call her on WhatsApp. I'm calling from land of India. Welcome and go yeah. ahead. I'm from, yeah, I'm from Anamu, Miata Anamu, from Anambra State. Nice to have you. Yeah, my name is Chukuike. Yeah. What I want to suggest this morning is, I don't want any flanny husband in our country. We have a. I don't want it. Let them go back to their country and do what, let them go back to their state and do what they want to do with their land. Okay? Thank, Thank you very much. We have heard you. 
they will go back to their states. Yeah. This is our land. We can yeah, share it with kids. Let them go back to yes. Let them go back to their land and do what they want to do with their land and stop coming to our our state and start killing everybody. Okay. Thank you for the last wonderful week, point. Last week we. Raised Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. We've gotten that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Last week we received a phone call. Our mothers, our fathers, has been slaughtered. In my time, in, in in my community, it's not good. It's not good at all that someone will leave a mother or a father and travel other country and you receive a phone call that your mother or your father has been killed on on no man if you are his men to be precise if you are his men okay it's thank not you very much uh, Mazi Elvis yes I want um, to ask the, the person the who becomes can hear me. the oh. Senate President of the Ninth Senate has continued to move on and on and on. It was the intention of some people that an Igbo man or perhaps a Biafran will become the Senate president on this ninth uh, Senate. But from what is happening right now, uh, the Igbos or perhaps the Biafrans will not smell that seat. Another level of marginalization on our people the number three political office in the contraption called Nigeria will not be smelled, not even the deputy senate president. How would you rate this? Did you mean or do you say that uh, our people have so far been excluded from Nigerian activities? And what would you advise our people to do, especially those that see themselves in the House of Representatives, do you think that they will likely make amendment and understand that they are no longer wanted in the contraption called Nigeria? Okay, um, my brother, this thing you asked me right now, though I have to, as an analyst, I have to say something about it, but um, it doesn't make sense to me. You know, I I I just um, want to use what is happening right now to confirm the prophetic utterance of our leader in 2014. He said that any Igbo man or so-called Biafran Igbo or people that is from the Biafra land that wants to serve the zoo will always come back in shame. And this is exactly what is happening right now. Let me just tell you. Those of them that call themselves one Nigeria, more especially the Igbo Nigerians, that call themselves one Nigeria, they have seen it right now that the deed has been that the, the, the deed has been done. The, the the country has been selected and the people that own the country has taken their properties. And those of them that are that are believed that has been begging, they are the people that build houses. So okay, Mazi Elvis, I'll get back to you. Caller on phone. Good morning and welcome to the okay. program. Yeah, it's two down. Good morning, uh, uh, every Friday. And a good morning, Mada Maduruk and uh, Mazi Elvis. My name is Shedra Echwubi. I come from Nenwe. Nenwe in Aliri, Enugu province. The Afraland. I'm the Roma coordinator. So what I want to contribute this morning is that this uh, news of clean our people in Anam uh, remove joy, remove joy on us when we hear such news early in the morning. We are no longer happy when we build our businesses here in Europe or when we go to work. We are no longer happy to do the work we just come out, only that we just manage it like that. Because it's a, 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 you get as it be that somebody will be in uh, his house, another person sleep or uh, relaxing, another woman being like him will just come and take over his life on a status. It doesn't happen in anywhere, you know? For example, our people, our youth, 
you should forget about governors and the chief because you cannot get anything from those people. Why I'm saying this is that there was a time, this, uh, I think uh, some years ago, I come and uh, if you ask the story of men, where well, you know, uh, there was a time those are suffering. If they go to our, our, our farm, we eat crops. Then our boys, we, we don't have gun. We use our, our big cutlass. We, we use cutlass and go to farm also, rush into the farm, maybe 20, 30, 100. We mass it. We rush, if you just see the group of cow, you just raise your knife, you will cut their neck. The, farm, the, um, the cow will fall for grand. So, they, they, they now go and report to Nume police. You know, maybe you have heard about Nume. They report in the Nume police. Nume police uh, go and report to any state police. They arrest our, in our area. Everything, we bail our people, and the matter ended like that. Fulani people does not stay where their cow dies. They better die than their cow die. That is their system. Even, even what the other people never know. They doesn't stay a place their cow dies. They stay in a place they can die, not their cow. They love their cow than their self. That is natural. That is not our people know that. That's why we don't kill them. We just kill their cow. Then they go away. But if you continue, if you continue cry like this, nobody is coming for their age. And they, they should not wait for POB. No, this is not much. IPOB. This is a matter of indigenous people because you cannot be in your house, another person will come and kill you, you will be looking for government or you will be looking for chief. It does not concern them. You group your you group your if you cannot do that, but not our mothers and the fathers. Thank you very much. Uh Mazi Alvis. Yes. Um, I people I are being killed. So, I don't know what last word you have for your fans before we call it a shot. Yes, um, my brother, we have talked and talked and talked enough. It is time to go back to the drawing board and do the needful. And um, uh, IPOB has educated our people enough right from 2013 or 2012 per se till today. How many years is that? Even if one that entered university might have graduated by now, even did his NYAC as they call it, and um, uh, start work. So, but right now, our well, people are still, I don't know, because uh, the problem is, I don't know if it is because of um, how we are brought or something, but I, I just want to tell our people. If you know your problem, your problem is already solved. When you need doctors or prophets or kind of people that are all these sorcerers to speak to you, is when you don't have solution for your problem. But when you have a solution for a problem, you go straight to it. You know, that like this very Igwe, some people might not even know where he's living is very close. If you get to Asaba Federal Government College, there is a place they call Jarek. He lives around Jared. When you get to every place, you see him. His name is Sylvester Nose. So, and uh, people are they kind of they are living in fear because of AK-47. I don't blame them most of the times. But you have the time, or you have all the time in the world to apply yourself very well and do the needful at the right time to secure yourself. Stop crying and stop protesting and going to the government house. These are the people that are killing you. Then another thing I want to say to IPOB is, um, please, Make sure you safeguard your domain. Make sure you are very much security. Thank you very much, Master Elvis. We hope you join us next time uh, tomorrow. Um, Nada Oyinechi. Before we, you know, cut the curtain, what do you have to say to be friends all over the world? No, um, the fact is that. Um Biafra land is not a grazing field, I keep saying. There is no way in the constitution of the Demnable Republic of Nigeria that says that um, uh, this portion, this geographical portion, is a grazing field. I mean, the, the Fulanese, they have land, they have weeds on their land, they have plants growing. Why don't they take their activities to their land and 
do whatever they want there. I mean, we have farmers here, we have um, shepherds here, but we don't, you don't see us packing up our bag and going down to the north to go and constitute new lands there because that is what they are doing in our land. So I think it's about time. It doesn't matter um, how much the, the, the traditional rulers or the government have collected from those people. Like I said, it is not them that is dying. It is us, our children, our mothers, our fathers. So it's about time we protect ourselves, we defend ourselves, we claim our land. This is our land. This land does not belong. In fact, we are the one that puts the traditional ruler there to lead us. So we are the one that make decision whether we want to protect our land to defend ourselves or whether if there is no need of lying to ourselves and telling ourselves that we are putting our faith in the hands of the government. And mind you, there is no need of saying, okay, let me go to the police station and report. The police will do nothing. They have done nothing in the past. They will continue to do nothing. So what I'm saying is, let us overwhelm them. Let us chase them out of our land. Biafra land is not a grazing field. People live here. This is not a desert. They should go back to their land. They have land, fertile land. They should go and feed their cow in their land. Let us okay. chase them out of the land. That is my contribution. Okay, and I'm um, also talking about um, IPOBs. If you are a Biafran that have not joined IPOB, I don't know what you're waiting for. I will advise you to join IPOB units nearest to you as we we'll continue to spread this gospel, as we continue to bring to light the injustice that we are facing in the Republic of Nigeria. Thank you. Mr. Thank you very much. Uh, the program has been Sunrise Daily Paper Review on Biafra Television. We transmitted also on Radio Biafra. Uh, we streamed live on our Facebook page, Radio Biafra, and we also streamed on uh, YouTube, Periscope, and other platforms which you can easily get to us. Go on to any of these platforms and share our programs. Let millions of people all over the world watch and see what is happening in our area. On behalf of those that worked assiduously to make sure that the program is brought to you this morning, the crew members of the Biafran Television, from me, from here, Mazi Oge Friday, and those who contributed, our analyst, Onyechi Nabuko, and our brother, Mazi Elvis, and you who called in, and you who listened and watched. We say, much you a blessing. Until you come your way next time, tomorrow, on this same channel, we say, remain blessed. May you bless you. Thank you very much. From here, we sign signing out.